it may not seem like it, but there are actually lots of things that you can do to make your life easier. And after last year, I think we all deserve a little bit of an easier ride. So I'm going to suggest lots of things in here and some of them may be suitable for you, some of them may not be suitable for you. You need to go and talk to the grown-ups at home and your teachers and have a think about it and see if any of these um, would work for you. So this is going to be for GCSE and A-level and I will leave kind of like the timestamps in the pinned comments so if you're an A-level student you can just jump to the A-level bit and if you're a GCSE student you can watch the GCSE bit but uh, I didn't want to make two videos so I took the easy way out and that's okay. you are a GCSE student there are actually a lot of things that you can do to make your life easier and these are things that maybe your school hasn't suggested to you so I'm going to suggest them to you and you can decide whether these are the right or the wrong things for you to do um because everyone's got different circumstances everyone's got different situations what's right for some person one person might not be right for a different person and maybe your schools your teachers haven't suggested these things for you because they don't know how hard you're finding things at the moment they don't know maybe everything that's going on at home they don't know how stressed you are maybe they don't know what your plans for the future are but you kind of do know all this okay maybe you haven't finished working out your plans for the future yet but you know a lot more about yourself than your school does so you and the people at home in combination with your schools and teachers can work out what is the best course of action for you now for GCSE I imagine you're taking a large number of subjects some of you might be taking 10, some of you might be taking 11 or 12 or 13 or 14, some of you might already only be taking 8 or 6 or 5 subjects and that's fine. It doesn't really matter how many subjects you take as long as you get your 5 good passes, so 5 at grade 4 or 5. If you're taking 10 GCSEs, the difference between writing on your CV in the future 10 GCSEs versus 9 GCSEs, well there isn't actually a huge difference there. So think about all the subjects you're doing. You probably had to choose your options in year eight or year nine, and you had to pick 10, 11 subjects. And maybe all of those subjects are not your absolute favorites. I know that when I did my GCSEs, I did, God, I did double science, maths, double English. So that's my five core subjects there. These are the ones I'm never going to remember. I can never remember nine of them. I did French and German. I didn't need two languages. So maybe I was making the decision. I would decide to not do one of the languages. Then I was doing geography, DT, no, graphic design, not DT, graphic design and economics. So out of those five ones there, none of those five GCSEs, the, the options that i chosen, were relevant for my future, any of my future careers. So if, like me, you are doing two languages, maybe you don't need to. Now when we get to the future and you're writing your CVs, you don't have to write all of them down. You don't have to write down every single grade that you got. You could miss off one. So you could take those five options. I mean, graphic design, I literally only picked it because my friends were doing it. They had absolutely no attention to the lessons. I'm really sorry. I so, can't remember what your name was, but I'm sorry for not paying attention to any of my graphics lessons or doing hardly any of the work in my graphics. can't even remember what grade I got. But for example, if I got a two in my graphics and then didn't write that on my CV in the future because I just decided to not. Well, that wouldn't have affected my future career in any way at all. Now, it is unlikely, maybe likely, that your school is just going to let you drop subjects. But you might want to unofficially drop it. I know, that's a really bad thing for me to say. Now, a good example of this is when I come to my A-levels. I did four A-levels because I was an insane, crazy person. I did biology, chemistry, math, and further math. 
and about halfway through I decided that further maths was actually just a step too far and that I didn't want to do further maths anymore. Um, I went and told that to school and they were kind of like, fine, you don't have to turn up to the lessons anymore but you still have to sit the exam. So I was kind of, okay, that's fine, I get all my time back, I don't have to do anything work, I don't have to do it, but I still have to sit the exam. So technically I was still taking further maths A level, but I didn't do any work for it. So even if your school don't let you drop it and you still have to turn up for things and you still have to do the classwork and do the homework, maybe you don't revise for the exam. Maybe you agree with your people at home to unofficially drop the second language or graphics or whichever humanities you, you don't fancy doing. Now obviously there are risks for this. If you, um, for example, want to go to a super fancy university, you're going to need a lot of really good GCSE grades. For example, UCL insist on you having a language GCSE. So before you unofficially or officially drop any of your subjects, think about it really, really carefully. The other thing that you can do is ask your teachers to switch to the foundation paper. Now, this is really only relevant in maths and science. I don't think anyone else, languages, languages? Anyway, math and science. Now, this is a tricky one this year because we've been told that there's going to be generous grading. So chances are people that might be on a five might get a six for the generous grading. And that's just guessing because nobody's actually told us anything this year. Now the, the guidance for teachers is only put people in for high paper if you think they're a definite six. Anyone that's a five, put them in for the foundation paper because it will make their life easier. The problem with teachers being told that there's generous grading is that people are on the five six boundary, people, teachers might be tempted to put them in for the higher paper. But the foundation paper is easier. There is less content to know, um, and the content that you have to know is and um, is hard. So if you need a five in maths or science, seriously consider asking to be put down to the foundation paper. It will make your life easier. And no one in the future will know. There is nowhere on your CV or on your certificate that says you sat the foundation paper. No one is going to think less of you for getting a five on the foundation paper as opposed to the higher paper. But huge amounts of content you just don't need to cover. And the content that you do need to do for the foundation maths, foundation science, is the easier stuff. I mean, you still have to get marks in the exam. And you have to get more marks in the exam but the questions are easier so seriously seriously think about doing the foundation papers and if you're not sure whether this is a good idea then go and get a math paper print out the higher paper print out the foundation paper do it mark it and see which one you felt more comfortable with you found easier and which one you got the better grade on and if you got the same grade on both and you don't need or want to put the the time and effort and the revision into getting a six, then seriously consider doing the foundation paper. Now, similarly for science, we have separate and we have combined. For combined science, you only get two GCSEs. For separate science, you get three GCSEs. Obviously, for separate science, you have to do a lot more work. And combined science, there is less content. There is less content and there's less exams and there's less things to do. So if you are doing separate science and you are really struggling with some of the separate only content, consider asking your teachers to switch to foundation. I know this is going to be a big brave thing for you to do, to go and ask your teachers, you probably have a meeting with the head of department, but if it is going to be good for your mental health in the long run, this is something we should really, really think about. So for GCSEs, those are my three things for you to do officially or unofficially I know school's gonna hate me for this drop my subjects consider moving down to the foundation paper because it will be less work for you and then for science see if you can switch from combined to fat separate or separate to combined whichever way works for you best so GCSE guys I'll see you in the next video if you are an A-level student, things are a little bit different to GCSE. Because you are generally only sitting 
three or four subjects and if you're in year 13 then it is well you've been applying the UCAS as well which is a bit brutal so that is my first thing that I would like you to seriously consider doing taking a gap year give yourself a break I mean on top of revising for your mocks and on top of in the future doing interviews and worrying about what your um, A-level grades are going to be because it is dependent on university. Consider taking gap year and giving yourself a break. Have a year off to work or travel. God, I'm not sure we're going to be at any of those things. Or volunteer. That's something you should definitely be able to do. Go and volunteer in a hospital or something. Give yourself a break. Have a year off. There are lots of advantages to doing this. First of all, you have a break from this horrible, horrible year. But it also means you can apply to university with your grades. You will have more time to apply to university. The school generally are still willing to help you if you apply a year after you have left. But if you're applying with your grades, you don't have the stress of resulting for result, waiting for results day and since you're going through clearing and waiting to see what would happen. Um, you can make more informed choices about um, where you apply to because you already have your grades. And then you're much more likely to get offers sooner and they're much more likely to be kind of like unconditional offers because you already have your grades. So it takes massive, massive stress out of it. So two advantages, giving yourself a break for a year because you all deserve it and it will make the application process less stressful. Now, I know um, lots of you aren't going to be in a position where you can do that because of financial reasons and I am fully aware of this but you might want to consider just trying to get yourself a job for a year and seeing if that will work. Now when I did my A-levels I did four. I know I was a crazy insane person. I did biology, chemistry, maths and further maths um, but I decided actually further maths was a bit too much effort than I was willing to put in so I asked if I could drop further maths and the school said no you cannot drop further maths but you don't have to turn up to lessons anymore and you don't have to do any homework but you still have to sit the exam and I was kind of like okay that's fine so I only have to give up a few hours of my time as opposed to lots of hours of my time I turned up to set the exam and somehow having done no work in year 13 and no revision for this exam I still managed to get a D in further maths literally no idea how that happened um anyway you may or may not have the option of dropping some subjects but year 14 does exist it really does so you might just want to focus on a number or um, two subjects for this year and then plan to do a year 14. Now not all schools will allow you to just do one subject at year 14 so you might have to do two subjects and the reason for this is funding. The government will not fund a student who is doing less than a certain number of hours and you generally have to be doing two or three maybe subjects to allow the school to get funding for you. So you might have to redo everything again but year 14 is not a bad option really it's not there is absolutely no shame in this especially if you are a summer birthday i have taught students who have not been allowed to drink legally on gcse results day because they were still 17. you are potentially a whole year younger than other people in your class and that does put you at a disadvantage the other thing you might want to consider is looking at university courses with foundation years so a year zero now this does mean you are at university for a year longer but this year zero lets you onto courses like medicine with grades that wouldn't get you onto year one of the course and it's kind of like repeating A levels a little bit so it takes a lot of the pressure off you. It makes things a lot easier for you if you know you're going on to a course with a foundation year. Or look at things like apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships, where you're going to be going straight into work and you're giving yourself a break from studying. Generally, the, um, the entry requirements for these are different to going on to a, a purely academic university course. 
So, um, this year is brutal, guys. I'm sorry I don't have as many suggestions for you as I have for the GCSE students. You can go and watch those. They were amazing. But I am going to be here with you every single step of the way. Um, last year was absolutely brutal. And if anything that I've suggested will help look after your mental health, then I would like you to seriously consider it.